Well, welcome back everybody to my Alaskan Klikai. I have today with me Sky and Copper, and they are Alaskan Klikai that you may or may not know already from Instagram called I Spy of My Little Sky. We started this YouTube channel last month in the hope to provide a glimpse into what Sky and Copper are like in video format, as well as try to provide people who are interested in Alaskan Klikai with more information. Now I spoke to a separation anxiety expert last week, partly because Sky and Copper have both suffered with separation anxiety, but also because I wanted to give our readers and our YouTube viewers the chance to learn a little bit more. Personally, I have encountered separation anxiety with both Sky and Copper, but a lot of what I've read online is very generalized and I wanted to learn more about it from somebody who actually has experience of it. So I contacted Milena Di Martini, and she is a separation anxiety expert based in the Bay Area. And she's got almost 20 years of experience working exclusively of dogs who suffer from separation anxiety. So before I touch on what she said, I just wanted to give you guys a bit of a background about Sky and Copper and how separation anxiety has affected them. So we got Sky in September 2017, and for the first six months, she was the only dog in the house and she didn't like to be left alone and it pretty much started from the day we brought her back. We did a bit of research online and we read about the kind of cry it out method as Melina refers to it and that is where you basically leave your dog, you don't react to their crying, their barking or their howling and just let them cry it out and eventually they will stop doing it. And what we understood to be correct at that time was if you did that then your dog would soon learn that you come back and then it would stop crying and howling and barking every time you left because it would understand that you are eventually going to come back. However, that didn't really work with Sky because she continued to cry on and off throughout the whole time while she would be alone. She used to go in a crate because, again, we had done a bit of research online and read that crating your dog would help them feel more secure. Now, sometimes we would cover the, care, the crate with a blanket and we had also read that that would make them feel even more secure or else we'd put an item of clothing of mine or my wife's to kind of make them make her feel like we were still there all these kind of things that you would read about online however we would get back after two or three hours separated from her and we would find that some of our clothes would be dragged in from the top of the crate and into the crate itself or if we didn't leave clothes there then the blanket that we had put over the crate would be also in the crate and chewed up or torn to shreds. The same would go for her dog bed. She would dig at it or she would chew it at it and the fluff would come out from the inside. Now we did move into an apartment with, before we got copper and in the apartment it was quite well insulated. So we got a dog camera but the barking didn't really affect us because there was no neighbors to complain. Having said that, we didn't like to see how distressed Sky was. Now before we got Copper, in the weeks just preceding it, she actually started to show a couple of signs of improvement where she would bark and cry for the first 10 minutes but then after that she would actually be perfectly fine as long as she wasn't left for a ridiculous amount of time like 4 or 5 hours which fortunately we were in the position that we didn't have to do as I work from home. But at the same time we thought well if we get a second dog, we wanted to get a second dog anyway but we thought well maybe it will actually help with her separation anxiety and that is something that you probably will read a lot online where people either ask and I know we have had a lot of DMs and messages asking, does a second click eye help? And you'll read it online in several places as well that a second dog can help to soothe the separation anxiety. And I have to say, it actually did appear to help Sky. Her separation anxiety was better when she had Copper with her, but Copper's was worse than Sky's ever was. So we fixed Sky, but then had an even bigger problem with Copper, and he hated being left alone as well. But Unlike Sky, who would, when she was at her worst, cry really loudly for 10 to 15 minutes and then it would become, become very kind of interspersed where it would only be every couple of 20 or 30 minutes where you might hear something from her. Copper would cry and howl and whine and bark and non-stop. Now he wasn't so bad at dragging stuff into the crate or chewing stuff that was inside the crate. He just wouldn't stop making noise. So it was interesting that we thought that we had actually potentially found the fix to the problem with Sky and was hoping that both of them together would keep each other company, but we actually had a dog that was even worse than the original issue. So like I said, I contacted Melena Di Martini and she is based in the Bay Area and she is an expert on separation anxiety. And I thought I'd share some of the things that we spoke about with her 
And this video today, I'm going to look at some of the myths and misconceptions surrounding separation anxiety. So these could be some of the things that you've heard that have made you feel demoralized, that you believe to be true, that actually aren't as true as you would expect. So the first myth that Milena really wanted to debunk was that you, the dog owner, created the separation anxiety in your dog. Now, I know I have definitely had that thought before, particularly because we would used to let Sky sleep in the, our bed and we also let Copper sleep in our bed. Now, I'm not talking about every single day, but three to four times a week, we probably would give in and they would sleep in the bed with us. And we did think that perhaps by doing this, it actually created the separation anxiety or made it worse. I also work from home, so I'm always with Sky and Copper. So we also thought perhaps the fact that I was always with them, they were so used to my company and getting attention off me that perhaps that was another reason their separation anxiety was so bad. However, Milena was keen to stress that you, the dog owner, can't cause the separation anxiety in your dog. You haven't done something to create it. So whether it's sleeping with your dog in your bed, whether it's your dog following you around the house like a Velcro dog as they call it all day long, whether it's giving your dog lots of attention, you haven't created the separation anxiety. So it's time to stop blaming yourself. It's not your fault. The second myth that Milena was really keen to debunk was that separation anxiety can't be cured. Now, she says it can be fixed and she has a host of cases over the past 20 years that prove so. I think she has worked with hundreds and hundreds of dogs with separation anxiety. However, if you have had a dog with separation anxiety like me, you will probably have been told by somebody, well, good luck trying to fix that problem or, or well, I feel really sorry for you. That is a really difficult problem to overcome. And I know myself, I felt pretty helpless with this and felt like, well, I can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. Is this ever going to be a non-issue? However, she says that it can be fixed and she was really keen to get that out there. So dog owners don't feel so helpless that, you know, this is a problem we're going to have to deal with for life. This is pretty much a death sentence now. So if there is a treatment protocol in place, separation anxiety can be cured. Now, you may have been told by a dog owner to try a number of different things, or you may have been told by a dog trainer to try a number of different things. These could include like putting Kong in a crate with a treat in it, playing music, aromatherapy, trying to make it less obvious that you're leaving the house. But Milena says that you need to have a clear and concise plan in, pro in place to help overcome this issue. She also said that separation anxiety should be a very hands-on and smooth process. So a dog trainer needs to be able to direct the client succinctly as opposed to trying all these different things and then trying something the next day and then trying something the next day. It has to be a real system in place. So those were two of the myths that Milena was keen to debunk and they are that you, the dog owner, created the separation anxiety and that separation anxiety can't be cured. Now I spoke to her for about an hour and there was lots of great stuff in there. So I'm definitely going to do a couple more videos on separation anxiety about other topics that we discussed. But just two more points to wrap up before I finish this video is that firstly, there is a genetic marker that is associated with separation anxiety in dogs. So in theory, you could do everything right to make sure that your dog is less likely to suffer when left alone, but they could still struggle with separation anxiety because they have this genetic marker. And secondly, if you think about the number of people that let their dog sleep in their bed, because let's be honest, a lot of people do. I'd say almost most of us probably do, even though a lot of us won't admit it. Think about how many of those dogs don't actually suffer with separation anxiety. So those are just two thoughts to go away with at the end of this video today. If you haven't already, please do hit subscribe to our YouTube channel, My Alaskan Klikai. And you can also go over to Instagram and follow us at I Spy of My Little Sky. And if you have any comments or any questions about separation anxiety, please do leave them below or else send me an email or send a direct message and I'd love to hear them. And potentially I could ask Melina the questions next time I speak to her. So that's all for me today. Um, thank you for tuning in and we'll be back soon with another video on separation anxiety.